Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. I serve women all over the world to earn more money, create more opportunities, and thrive in the tech industry because tech needs all of us. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, brave people. Glorious women in tech. So excited to talk to you and thank you for coming to this episode. Time is invaluable. All right. Today we're going to talk about how to recover from a career mistake. I am going to walk through what most women in tech do and what you need to be doing instead. (laughs) All right. So here's what happens. You make a choice. It's either an empowered choice. You're super excited to work for this manager or this brand name or in this role, in this function, in this product. Or it's a disempowered choice. I need money. They made me an offer. I need money. Bob's your uncle. Or a disempowered choice of where I am right now is bad. So I'm leaping. I'm closing my eyes. I'm leaping to the first thing. No matter how you made it, empowered or disempowered, da, here we are. So you made this choice and you realize it's not great. You're unhappy. You were promised things and those things are not reality. You expected things. You made agreements and it's just not following through. Sometimes your manager, the manager you were just so excited to work with, leaves, you know, six months, a year later. Or the product you really believed in, you were so excited to develop or manage or implement or support or market or communicate or whatever, isn't what was described or becomes deinvested or a competitor just has a better offering. Or, you know, you join an org, it gets acquired. You join an organization, it merges. You join an organization and the values change, the strategy changes. All these things could happen. And you realize, ugh, I don't feel good. I dread going to work. I can never shut off my brain. I'm always thinking about work. I work with people I don't respect. I'm bored. You know, bore out is a real thing. There's an earlier conversation all about bore out with Nicole, with a fellow Nicole who's amazing. You're bored or you're getting burnt out or you feel confused all the time because one thing is said and a different thing is done, or one thing is said and then a different thing is said. (laughs) And so here's what the majority of y'all do. You spin. You spin and you spin and you spin. But they promised me this. Oh, I can make this work. If I pay more attention, I'll learn something. I'm bored because I'm not demanding enough. You complain, a lot of complaining, complaining to your partners, to your friends, to your mentors, to your teammate, to your boss, to your clients, to your partners at work, to your fellow colleagues. You complain and you complain and you complain. You work harder. You work longer. You're going to show them. You're going to show them. And most of all, You build distrust in yourself. You know it's not right. You know you're unhappy. You're either bored or burnt out. You're in this show it to them. You're working harder and you're never not thinking about work and you're going to show it to them. And what you're actually doing is you're creating more distrust in yourself. You made a mistake. 
So you just keep making it. (laughs) You made a choice, it turned into a mistake, and you just keep making it. But here's the reality. You're never going to show them ever, (laughs) ever. You're never going to show them because it's working for them. The manager who moves on and a new manager comes in who could be a fantastic person. It's not a good fit. Their strategy is different. Their style is different. I had a manager that got transitioned and she literally told me she doesn't like working with young, ambitious women. I was in my mid twenties, super ambitious, definitely a woman. And then you just keep making the mistake. You keep building the distrust inside of yourself because it's not working for you, but it's working for them. You're not going to show them anything. So that's what you actually do. You just keep making the career mistake and you spiral down. So instead of getting really clear and then going into a positive momentum and then going into accountability that serves you, you get really clear, maybe, maybe not. I'm surprised by how many people are super clear. You know, we get onto a consult and they're super clear about the problem. I just, I don't match with this strategy anymore. I am super bored at what I'm doing. My manager has promised me X, Y, Z, and that manager just doesn't follow through. Super clear or not. I don't know. I'm just really unhappy. I'm really overworked. I think I'm underpaid. I think I want to do something else. Either way, then the momentum you create from that is negative. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to sit in my confusion. I'm going to learn to distrust myself. I'm going to learn to complain. I'm going to over schedule myself. I'm going to learn to let other people walk over me, to be underpaid, to be lied to, to be misled. And I'm going to experience all these negative feelings of frustration and disgust, disrespect, unhappiness, sadness, apathy. That's the momentum you create. And then in accountability, you build habits, you strengthen habits that suck, that hold you back. You stay in relationships with people who are also like, yeah, it's awful, but what can you do? You made the choice. Just keep making it. You made the mistake. Just keep making it. You build belief that this is all you can have. I mean, it's like this for everybody. Every corporation has problems. No manager is perfect. We're just behind. And then you're unhappy. You know what? Unhappy people unhappy professionals as a former leader and a former unhappy woman in tech. I did all this and more. People who are unhappy, they don't get significant raises. They don't get promotions. And they certainly don't continue to get them over time. If a woman comes to me on a consult and she says, I haven't had a significant raise in three years, four years, five years, raises aren't even covering inflation. How unhappy are you? Because unhappy people, people who are lacking clarity, who have negative momentum, who have habits and mindsets and relationships that do not lift them up to who they are becoming, they get stalled and then they keep making the mistake. But you don't have to do this. There is a way to recover from a career mistake. And here we go. Three steps. Number one, you acknowledge the gap and you do it specifically. This is specifically what's not working for me with this manager. This is specifically what I was promised and what's actually happening in this organization, in this brand name, that's not working for me. This is what I expected this role to be, 
what it is in theory and what I'm actually doing every day, every week, every month, every quarter, and it's not working for me. This is exactly how I feel and how I want to feel. This is exactly my pay, and this is what I want it to be. This is my title. This is what I want it to be. You get super, super specific, and you do this for yourself. Is this uncomfortable? Yep, sure is. You know what's even more uncomfortable? Staying in a mistake, choosing to be unhappy, thinking that that's normal. You also can do this with a mentor. You can do this with a coach. You can do this with a partner. Who you do not do this with, please hear me. You do not do this with a teammate. You do not do this with a colleague. You do not do this with a boss. When you are working through acknowledging the gap, specifically what is, what you want, what's not serving you, what's not working for you. You do not do this with people in the system with you. This is for you. And to recover from a career mistake, you have to be building trust in yourself. You've been building distrust what you need to be doing is building trust. So now you've got your gap and you've got it specifically. This is where you confirm it. This is not complaining. This is when you say, hey, I just want to confirm. My understanding is this is our goal. Our goal is 2,000 new customers. And our investment reflects 500 new customers. Am I getting this right? You know, I understand my role is, and then you list out what you want it to be or what has been promised to you, what is documented, whatever the case may be. But this is what I'm actually doing. Does that seem right to you? You confirm it. You confirm it with your direct manager. And then you listen. You listen. You listen, 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 not for what you want to hear. You listen for what is actually said. Some people take notes of what is actually said. Other people get permission to record what is actually said. Some people type up their notes, but actually listen to what is said, not what you want to hear. That's a super hard step. Sometimes my clients have to have that conversation three times before they can actually hear what is being said and not what they want to hear. And then you go back and you reflect what was said, what was actually said, and what's actually happening. Yeah, yeah, we're totally invested for 2,000 new clients, customers. Totally, 100%. Um, My budget just got cut (laughs) three-fourths. So you really listen. So you lay it out with your direct manager. Here's what I was told. Here's the reality. Then you really listen and then you go off and you compare. There are people who are going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what we tell investors. That's what we tell clients. But really, (laughs) or we thought we needed that, but really, And there are going to be other people who just flat out lie to your face. No, you're confused. Of course I support your promotion. Of course. But you see in the behavior that it's not true. So you have to have the bravery to compare. Okay. And then the third step is you make a decision. So you've gotten super clear. You've gotten super specific. 
You've confirmed it. You've watched, you've listened, and then you've watched. You're in reality. You're in the specifics. And then you decide. You decide. This may sound too mm, complex. This may sound too wishy-washy. Okay, so I'm going to tell a story. I find that storytelling really helps me. So here's the story. A client came to me and she was miserable. She was miserable. Her storytelling was scattered. Her thoughts were all over the place. And when I finally got her to specifics in the consultation, she had definitely missed at least a promotion cycle. There was something going on with her performance, something. Can't always tell on a consult. And definitely underpaid and miserable. So we start working together and it turns out she was on a performance improvement plan. Sidebar, for someone with a stutter, that is such a darn hard thing to say moving forward. I'm just going to say PIP, P-I-P, PIP, okay? And she was never told. So here she was, trucking, 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 doesn't get a salary increase, gets skipped over for stock options, given people to mentor, given a really important project, and then it turns out in the background, she's actually on a PIP plan. When she spoke with her manager, when she got really, really clear, she was so clear. And then she listened, really listened. She came into our next session and she was so like, okay, I got to buckle down. I got to work harder. This person supports me. They're going to get me off the PIP plan. It's not my manager's fault. It's the person before that manager, that manager screwed me over. And I listened and I said, track the behavior. Does he still refer to you as a girl, as a woman? Does he still silence you and talk over you in meetings? I mean, y'all, side note, the discrimination in this team was un believable Like, took my breath away on numerous accounts. Numerous. And she had normalized it. The lying. The gender discrimination. I'm going to show them. <laughs> I'm going to do an amazing job. I'm going to take this on. I'm going to take this on. And when she started to really track what was said and then what was done, for example, with this PIP plan, the system at this company is that they get a development plan. They call it something else. It's a very dumb name. So we're just going to go with development plan. And this man, this man promised her for, I think, six weeks to get the development plan because he totally supports her. Totally. Absolutely inappropriate. Going to get you that dev plan. We're going to get you through that dev plan. No worries. Six weeks of telling her this. But his behavior was hiding He actually blamed her a few times because she needed the development plan to get through the process that he said he didn't support, that he said was no problem, but he wouldn't actually deliver it. And I'll be real. We got into a session and I had been prepping myself. So before every session, I really sit with my client, that specific client, and I really sit with them. I sit with their thoughts. I sit with their situation and I spend the majority of the time 
in who they want to become and what their goal is. We got onto a session and she started to explain to me how it was all getting better. And I gave her one of the most hard coaching sessions I've ever gifted someone. She could have hated me after that. (laughs) Really. Thank God my clients are amazing. I have the best clients. Hugely coachable. Because she didn't hate me. She finally, finally could compare. And then she could make a decision. So when she made the decision, there's the before and there's the after. This woman, oh my goodness, a couple of years before she had wanted to join a specific product line and she was not successful. She did not get in and there were a lot of very concrete reasons why. It was still in her head. She knew what she was passionate about. She knew what she wanted to be doing. And for reasons that are valid, she wanted to stay at the same brand name. She wanted to stay at the same company. So this woman, from the moment, the moment we had that super difficult coaching session, and she really compared really compared, really saw the mistake that she was making. And she stepped into the clarity and the positive momentum and began building the accountability that served her. She had interest interview after interest interview that turned into real interviews. She was on her mentor's doorstep. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what I want. What's your advice? What have you experienced? What have you seen work? She had clear and concise conversations about the gap with the manager's manager's manager, I believe, with positive emotion, positive momentum. A gentleman on the executive level actually reached out to her and said, hey, you seem awesome. Let's have some (laughs) one-on-ones. And then she stepped into the product line that she wanted to be in, doing work that confounds her in the best ways possible. Her storytelling is way more straightforward. She is on the track. She's already spoken to the new manager and been like, hey, I want a promotion. How do I get it done? And he's like, wow. You've only been with us for a short time, but it feels twice as long. You're on the right track. I see you bringing you into our team and our product. She's already set something literally on fire. (laughs) And her team celebrated her. They sent her an appreciate award and a welcome package because she failed. That's how you recover from a career mistake. That's how you do it. And that's how you keep doing it. Because those career mistakes, they're going to keep going. I have my own business and I've made mistakes. Of course. But that's how you recover it. That's how you create it into a learning experience. And that's how you elevate your career and the reality for women in tech. Because because women in tech, we can be well-paid. We can get those promotions we deserve based on the value we create and the potential we have. We can be invested in and we can invest in ourselves and we can be happy. We really can. That is possible for you. So until next time, brave it up. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. If you're ready to build your brave, to live a life you love and create a career that matters to you, reach out 
Together, we can spend time one-on-one to explore how I can help you. And until then, share this episode with people in your life, people who can join our movement to redefine brave, how we identify it, experience it, and celebrate it.